Anyway. There's a picture of a license plate on a car that was outside of uh, Edwin Walker's house. And other sources, they try to cover it up. Which shows there's conspiracy. They didn't want anybody to know who's car was. I think it went back to one of the guys connected to Ruby. Now this one, I say this is a must have. This one, <laughs> they did a story on this on A&E back in the days. And this is how they, how it shows you how the inner workings of the mob works. This book was recommended for the JFK connection, but Truth be told, there wasn't too much of that for me, but I think it was mainly the more intriguing thing about this is finding out about how the Chicago mob operated, taking over small towns so that uh, <laughs> by corrupt cops. And you get to learn about other mobsters that aren't famous, like High Larner. That's how I learned about him from reading this book. He was the Chicago Meyer Lansky. Yeah, and as you know, they're both the same type of people. <laughs> this one, David Lifton, best evidence. They did a, a little short or special about this. Yeah, now, for people who don't know, this is one clue how you could tell what kind of people you're dealing with. The first name, last names can be ambiguous. But yeah, he's one of them too. And he's a darker version. Now this one is thick. This one, I still say, stands as a great work to show you how they had to switch the body of JFK while on the plane and make the wounds fit the story because the wounds didn't fit the story. But you could see that they did manipulate the body in the pictures of his head, especially over here. You can say they had scalpel marks and all that kind of stuff. So that's that with the JFK. Now we're going to get into the black stuff. <clears throat> I admit I didn't read this whole thing. Sometimes these kind of books can be kind of boring. I'm not going to tell you any lie. But I forgot how long ago I bought this. Islam's Black Slaves. My main purpose of this is to find out what happened concerning so-called black slaves, but they really should have a book on Islam's white slaves because, and you can see this is a fabricated picture. They try to make it look like everybody was so white and only slaves were black. Nah, man, in Islam, most of the slaves were white. Why do you think they came, came up with the name Slob? Why do you think that comes from uh, white people? <laughs> because if if black people were the main slaves under Islam, they would have the word slave, or they would have a word similar to it, strictly for black people. I know some people might say a bead, but do we really know what that means? And who gave us that name? Was it the Arabs or was it the Turks? I don't consider that a must read. That's a curious read. Golden Age of the Moor. Been trying to find this for years. And I got turned away a lot of times because of the price. But I found this one, I think I paid maybe 17 for it. How much was this originally? Probably 15 or some shit like that. You know, black books are overpriced a lot of times. <laughs> anyway, Ivan Van Sertema, this is obviously a used copy. Originally 1992, second printing 96. Even with these kind of books, is 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 ideal to track down the first printing if you can. Then you get it as it was meant to be. Now there are some books, uh, subsequent printings can show you the give you more information, but um, I don't consider this one a, a must have, a must read. This is a pretty good read. And uh, they don't go into enough detail, despite the fact that it's thick, because it's a bunch of essays. That's the only reason I don't like about like this book. That's why it says edited by Ivan Van Sertum. It's a bunch of essays. It's not a written work. It's a whole bunch of different authors contributing to it, which means it doesn't have the focus that it needs to have. 
the Punic Wars. <laughs> you want to know why? I watch the uh, Coons. I probably shouldn't even show this book, but I'm going to show it anyway. The Coons like Garfield and these people, watch them. And Gozi, who say that Hannibal was a white man. This book is a must have. It's, it's, it's a difficult read, but the, it shows you, it tells you about the Punic Wars and what stuff that they had used and all that kind of stuff. They go into high detail. This book is only good for getting the details on what happened. They, as, it, as is always the case with these kind of people, these authors, they're not going to show you that Hannibal was black. You can tell that just by the goddamn cover. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they don't even have, they, they didn't even put you, give you a so-called mixed race Berber up to that. They get, look at that. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's why I dismissed this book. You, these people weren't, they didn't get there yet. <laughs> but they want you to believe those are the Carthaginians, elephants. I mean, they, they didn't even give them, uh, make them dark haired whites, man. They gave them all out blonde, yellow hair. So that's only good for uh, what happened. Yeah, I think this one got strict uh, put in there. I don't recommend this one. I just got it because it was Elijah Muhammad's. Yeah, that's right. I read those books too. This one is a must have right here. <laughs> a lot of people know about this. I forgot to bring that other one up the Malcolm X with the. Uh, FBI files. That's another one. But this one gives you good behind the scenes activity going on. This is a don't think about it. Get it book. Matter of fact, I got to get his book on the Elijah Muhammad once I find the right price. <laughs> this one, this is one of those. I like to find the older books on North Africa because you get to, uh, get a truer idea of the truth. You know, they don't really lie as much back then. Especially if you could find books from the uh, 20s and 30s because back then, you know, how these agents today, they like to say, if you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. I guess that was really true back in the 20s. In 30s, I don't know when this book was written. I'm going to find out in a second. But I got this because it was cheap. <laughs> and what year was this? Okay, I guess they have a whole series of books. 1969 on this one. Now, I know everybody knows this one. African presence in early Europe. Rashidi. See, the problem with people like Rashidi. Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, Ivan Van Serum. I thought this was Vinoko Rashidi. Edited by Rashidi. Okay, I think he might be in on this too because this is his, his uh, topic. See, the problem with this Rashidi and books like these is they keep trying to emphasize Africa. And Africanness. And this is why these foreign so called grandmaster teachers that we all talk about, you see, they keep talking about Africa. They don't want to accept that blacks were indigenous to Europe and that they were there first and whites took gradually took it over and usurped it. The evidence is clear. So they keep trying to push everything to Africa, which means that they're working for their white master. Because there's no need to keep putting everything on Africa. Why do you want to do that when the evidence... How do you get all these people in Europe? <laughs> I mean, the white man take them as slaves before the white man got there? All bullshit. And they like to say... People keep lying about the Moors, too. They lie and, and act like um, the Moors invaded a white Spain. No, they didn't. Because those white people... We're not from there. Those were Germanic tribes. I keep trying to tell people. I'm going to get into that one day. Now this book, you all know this one. I used to consider this the Bible. But 
it's still a great read. This is my original copy. This one <laughs> was salvaged from a fire I had long ago. Still smells like it too. This was used to be brand new. And I think this was a little bit older edition and I want to get a newer copy, but I think they uh, it was later than 87, so I didn't want to go there with that. But this, I mean, I still think this is a must have, but I don't go by my man's. Now, he was a black American, so he's not like these other guys, but Chancellor Williams, I, I don't agree with this Arab depiction. See, as great as these master teachers were, see, as an African looking savage with no clothes on, and the Arab, Arab looking like a white guy, civilized, but see, these guys weren't around then. That's what you got to understand. And when you're talking, now if he's talking invading the Congo, then you could put one of these guys there, but even then the headdress is all wrong. So what you got to look at is the state of who they invaded at the time. I mean, even his white Asian description, I can't even go along with that on that because there's no such thing as a white Asian at that time anyway. Now this one, <laughs> I got the whole series here. You know, I actually gave one of them away to an Italian lady who had a black daughter. The original ones I had, I think I bought them new. And uh, so now I had to find uh, another copy. That's how much I wanted that lady to have it because to show her how Italy was black. <laughs> I, I even gave the damn thing away. Obviously, these are the... Uh, any book collection, this is a must-have. I'm sorry. The third one, you know, that kind of moves away a little bit. And I know what people like Garfield are going to say. But this man was... He was a, uh, a Jamaican. Yes, he was. He was also half white, which shows that Jamaicans also uh, <laughs> love the white man. But she's the great great granddaughter of King George the Fourth. See, the, what's remarkable about this book? I think he got into it because he said he was mixed. But I think this book was written in the 1920s. I think. 20s and 30s. So for him to travel around the world and write a book like this and compile all the information is remarkable. Back then, you really had to put everything together in a hell of a way and save everything up. Now you can put everything on the computer. But I think he gives a clearer definition of, not definition, but clearer understanding on how things go and I think it's because he's mixed that helped now this one I tracked this one down I had the paper well, no I never had the paperback I was gonna get the paperback then I came across I think this is the second printing and I also got it for somebody who's no longer here they died it is the second printing and uh, well, I, for people who don't remember how to tell it, remember they used to tell us that in school, 64, 65, see? Second printing, I think it said it on the book too. <laughs> but this one, the one that I, uh, I got uh, my former friend who's no longer around, hers was in better condition. But um, this one, you get better information, pictures, and more closer to as it was back in the day. Hey, I just like to see it as it was with the exact cover so I can see how it was when it came out. You know? Famous cover was, save the video to a new file exceeds the limit.
Damn, new file. I got a, what is it, a 50 gig card or something. Oh, yeah, here's the other one with the bush. You can find this online. Thick as hell. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't have time to read these things. But you can rest assured when it came to the JFK stuff, I read them all. Everything I showed you, I read them all. You know, I did come across one book I forgot I bought. <laughs> but I'm going to get to that. You'll find out this man was a very sinister individual. So, with that, you know, these are the must-have books. This is part of my library. I got a whole bunch more, especially concerning Africa, Egypt, Rome, all those books. Matter of fact, hold up a second. <coughs> Forgot to put these on here, even though I set them aside. Hold on a second. I'm putting these out because these are some of my older ones. I have one on Rome and Greece, too. Now, of course, this is from the white perspective. That's why you always see the whitest looking, <laughs> or at least the ones they want you to think are white, on here. These are good for pictures. Of course, you got to go through other sources to get pictures. Now, these books, though, these are good. Like I said, these are. Now, if that ain't black, I don't know what it is. The facial features, notwithstanding. But these are good to, to know what happened. They're not going to tell you who because they don't want to do that. But to see artifacts. To see what happened and to read about what happened. This is where it's at. And I had another book that was better than this one. I used to get these. I used to buy these. I think this was a fifty or sixty dollar book. I had another one that I loaned to a guy when I was in college. <laughs> That's a while ago now. Man never gave it back, but then I ran into him. He gave me his number. Then I didn't call. So I guess you might as well say you can keep the book. Because I never found the book again. I forgot the title. But it was better than this one as far as the pictures go. Come on. Now you know that's the face of a black man. But Egypt was so remarkable. That's why they got to lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I like seeing stuff like this. The clothing. As it was. Well, not as it was. But it gives you a better idea of what Egypt had and what they didn't have. And that's how they pieced it, sold it together. So I like seeing stuff like that. I'm going to go through this whole thing because this is really thick, but this is how you truly learn. Don't listen to those Freemason jackasses. I mean, they'll tell you a little something <laughs> concerning the uh, Egypt, but they're gonna, only going to tell you what they want you to know, which is what their masters want you to know. But I like seeing the everyday life so I can visualize how it was back then. And then uh, you can see how the people were living. This one I just got. I didn't know what this was all about, but I figured I'd get it just to see, mainly because of this. Nubia and the Sudan. See, when they see, say Sudan, see, when books come, you don't know where they got them from. But I got this one from A Books. A Books, I'm telling you, they're very cheap. A lot of the prices include shipping. You can get books like these. I think this one's like $2 or something like that shipped. I don't know how the hell they're making money off of them. But I guess since you can go anywhere and get books for free, really, I guess they figured... um You know, they might as well just practically give them away and make whatever money they make off of them. Now, anybody who knows how to recognize people know that that's a Nubian pharaoh in the Egyptian style. But who that is, I don't know. See that hair, I noticed a lot of those kind of black. That hair, sea peoples maybe. 
And a lot of black people, these so-called scholars today, high school dropouts, they like confusing modern, those Israelites in particular, they like confusing, confusing modern Ethiopia with ancient Ethiopia, which is all that. I'm seeing a delay here because I got 60 frames per second, so. Matter of fact, as I'm looking at this right now, this is almost my first time looking at this. <laughs> I forgot I had it. Yeah, those are some white dudes right there, right? <laughs> I'm going to look at this because I was talking about, well, I don't even know if the video debuted yet. Semitic, Egyptian, Kushite, Omotic, so-called Bantu, Chadic, Berber. What's the difference between all these people? Language. That's your so-called Sub-Saharan Africa, right? <laughs> your Libyans. So they call them Southerners. They don't want to specify. Now this you see all the time. They say dark gray marble head of an African. Then other places say this is Roman. Other places say it's Greek. <laughs> they keep changing it around. But Nubians didn't have that hairdo and Egyptians didn't have that hairdo. So I'm more inclined to go with Rome on that. But see, this is what happens when other people take the whole land and they can alter shit to how they want it. Believe it or not, I like seeing stuff like this because this is the real stuff. This is why, in a way, books can be better than museums because a lot of times when you go to museums, it's the same stuff. Wish I had that other book I had because uh, that one had an Afro pick in it from Egyptian times. But most of the world's antiquities are in Egypt and Africa. No, I'm not Afrocentric, but those are the facts in that case. Language. See, a lot of people, even these Egyptian nuts, they don't like talking about Nubia. Something tells me they don't know anything about it or they prefer to not concentrate on it because their white masters don't concentrate on it. And in Sudan in particular, though, I think they need to uh, start cleaning up and cleaning up that sand. I'm sure there's a whole lot of stuff there that uh, is not discovered yet. It says bronze lamp in the form of a man's head. And I'm looking at the hair. I wonder why they didn't stress what kind of man that was. Because <laughs> that hair is pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm faceless, but you can see I got arms. <laughs> and as you can see, I'm a black man. So for meatballs, who keep trying to say that I'm not black. Hmm. All right, I'm almost done with this book and this video. Hopefully the volume came out right. <laughs> All right, so that's that, that's that with that. I'm done with that. I'm done with the video. But A Books, that's a good place to go get you some uh, books. They have, if Amazon, they seem to be tied in with Amazon too, but they have a whole bunch of other stuff. But if something costs too much on Amazon or eBay, A Books usually have it for far less money. You'll find yourself just buying a whole bunch at one time. <laughs> So with that, I'm out.